Hello, textile fans. It's Silent Signs from I Dream of Indie, and today we are taking a look at puzzle platformer Weaving Tides. In this game, you play as Tass, who clearly doesn't fit in in his current environment. He's being raised by a carpet dragon, which he calls his father, but the family resemblance isn't quite there. He also uses his father as a means of transportation as he flies around on this carpet dragon to various destinations, all the while trying to figure out exactly who he is and where he came from, what his origin story is. Weaving Tides has two modes. There's the adventure mode, which weaves the tale of Tass, and then there's a playground mode where you can fool around with the various ribbons you can acquire and unlock along the way in more of a sandbox style environment. As far as the adventure mode goes, the primary mechanic you are going to have to get used to is, well, as the name would imply, weaving. While you are riding on a carpet dragon, you can weave in and out of the environment to patch holes, to take on enemies, to defeat bosses, and to solve puzzles. You also have a dash ability, which you can use to either stun enemies or perhaps to cut a thread that was misplaced. Tass and his companion of choice, yes, there are more than one of these carpet dragons that you can acquire will go through various dungeons, puzzles, and ultimately bosses. You also collect currency along the way which you can use to purchase upgrades as well as new types of ribbon and you can even collect heart fragments in order to get more health. Well, I was overall a big fan of the themes of Weaving Tide as well as the gameplay when it came to exploring various environments, interacting with the other characters, and even just the actual act of fixing holes. I did find the puzzles to be a little bit frustrating at times. And honestly, oftentimes the solutions seemed pretty straightforward. It was just the execution that I was having a difficult time with. Just as an example, some puzzles require you to essentially connect the dots using thread and some dots will need to be used more than once. They will have a number of rings around them which will indicate how many times that particular dot will need to be used. While you're trying to solve that puzzle, there will be enemies that are breaking your threads so once you think you have everything worked out, you'll look at the bottom of the puzzle and find that the enemy has already destroyed your prior progress and you will be back to square one. I get it. I understand this type of puzzle and it's definitely combining the platforming and the puzzle work and that's fine. It just seemed in stark contrast to the overall kind of relaxing vibes of the game. It's a matter of personal preference, honestly. If you enjoy that sort of puzzle work, then you're going to have a lot of fun with Weaving Tides. It wasn't necessarily for me, but there was plenty in this game that was, so I can't really complain too much. One of the things I did really enjoy in Weaving Tides was the graphics. I thought the environments were absolutely brilliant. I loved the use of different materials and textiles in order to create this world that's essentially an art project. Each location had a unique palette and elements, and the hand-painted character portraits were gorgeous. Despite being very colorful and detailed, the colors were soft and definitely support that relaxing tone. The soundtrack was also nice and soft and soothing, and more on the acoustic side, you're not going to get any heavy hitting guitar and drums here. And same goes for the sound effects, nothing too jarring. There is no voice acting, which I do feel as though the game would have benefited from, if only to make the story a little bit more engaging. But as a whole, I did appreciate the presentation of Weaving Tides. I could tell a lot of love was put into creating these worlds and characters and environments. I love the themes of textiles, and I do think they've created a really unique and cozy feeling world. I do wish that the gameplay was a little more in line with the presentation because I feel like the frustration of some of the puzzles and enemy fights are a little bit in contrast to that relaxing environment that they've created. I would love to see if any of you can create some beautiful works of art in the playground mode. I think that leaves a lot open for creativity. Thank you. 
So will you be weaving your own yarn with weaving tides? Let me know in the comments down below. Before I go, I just wanted to thank our indie warriors, Mitchell Hall, Kevalo, Bunny, Bill T. Kaz, Christian Cruz, Strict9, Rosie Syntax, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, Jesse, Falco Lombardi, C. Coyle, and Skeptism. Thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any reviews or previews and check out the description box if you'd like for a bunch of other ways to support the channel. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.